the mother of fascism, Italy, the mother of Nazism, Germany, the mother of democracy, India. <laughs> I will tell you about Druvrati's so-called washing machine. It is very Katarnak. No, India is not becoming like North Korea, but will Druvrati be in a similar situation to Dr. Zakir Naik at some point? Or will he be in a situation like Pannun or somebody else? Druvrati, Germany, mein Indians ko German logon ne bhaga bhaga ke unko lynch karne ki koshish ki. Yes, attempts to lynch Indians in Germany in a so-called liberal democracy. Indians were locked inside and those German men? Druvrati, I want to ask you this. Tum ko nit kese ajati hai? Besharmi ki bhi had hoti hai. Is Druvrati acting like a dictator? Stay with me because this is one of the most important videos that I have made for India. I will cover everything that you are seeing on your screen point by point in this video, including a perspective that you have probably never heard before and the hard-hitting facts that many want to hide from you. But before we begin, pause the video and read what is written here to make sure this video reaches as many people as possible. Yes, somehow it is understandable that India's enemies in Pakistan want to deceitfully defame India on the international stage by referring to India as a dictatorship. But why are others, including multiple Western institutions or individuals, using this twisted narrative from India's enemies against India? Before I answer that, first let's try to understand the dirty reality of Germany and other so-called liberal Western democracies that people like Druvrati may never tell you about. Question 1. Is Germany becoming a dictatorship? Well, to broaden our understanding about Germany, let's go through these points one by one. So to start with, has Druvrati shared this picture of modern-day Germany with you? <laughs> no, no, no. These are not German soldiers. These are German neo-Nazis participating in big training drills with their ultra-modern weapons, preparing to repeat some of the crimes that Hitler committed. Yes, as reported here, these are their preparations for Day X, a date when the German state will collapse and German neo-Nazis will seize power to re-establish order. As described here, it is the rise of neo-Nazi ideology in modern-day Germany, including within the country's military and police. Yes, you heard that right, even within German police and military. Because of the spread of neo-Nazism, even asking for police protection can be risky in Germany. I mean, after receiving death threats, if this German female politician couldn't even trust her country's police and army, I think we are dealing with a country that seems more like a failed state. Yes, in Germany, more than 12,000 crimes by far-right extremists were committed in just a single year. In Germany, there are neo-Nazis who claim that the last real German government was the Third Reich of Adolf Hitler. Would Druvrati or others from India be safe if neo-Nazis succeed in taking over Germany? Honestly speaking, I am very concerned. Next point. An Indian-born propagandist who lives in Germany has attempted to fool many gullible Indians by presenting Germany as a country where Christianity or religion does not play a major role. But dear Indians, I am here to tell you what Druvrati seems not so keen to tell you. As reported here, the German state of Bavaria ordered Christian crosses to be placed at the entrances to its public buildings. Also see this, crosses, compulsory in public school classrooms and courtrooms. But don't be surprised, in Germany, Christian nationalism is just a way of life, regardless of the political party in power. Want to know why? Well, hold on to your seats. So, to start with, do you know who the largest private employer in Germany is? Well, you might guess and say it could be Volkswagen, Mercedes or Siemens, right? <laughs> now listen, as mentioned here, the Catholic Church emerged as the largest private employer in Germany. Yes, not many people know it, but the two major churches in Germany, Catholic and Protestant, are the country's second largest employer after the public authorities. Together, they employ about 1.3 million people and have their own church labor laws. Yes, you heard that right. Churches employing over a million civilian employees in Germany. And seriously, having their own church labor laws? Allowed by the German constitution? <laughs> no, 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 no. It is not Saudi Arabia and their Sharia law. It is Germany and its church labor laws. How cute. I mean, what a naked display of the death of democracy we are seeing right here in Germany. 
Now pay attention, this is quite shocking. The German government makes its churches richer and stronger by giving them billions of euros every year after collecting a mandatory church tax from its millions of Christians. It can be as high as 8-9% to of one's income tax. Can you believe that? It is not just Germany. Multiple Western criminal democracies, I mean <laughs> liberal democracies, also do something similar, charging a mandatory church tax. From birth to death, many Germans have no choice but to depend on kindergartens, schools, academic institutions, hospitals, nursing homes, etc. that are paid for by the taxpayer but run by the church. As described here, there are roughly 1.3 million people in Germany who work for a church-run institution sign special employment contracts. In Germany, many of these church-run institutions don't even accept employees who aren't Christians. Even victims have been turned away in the church-run hospitals. Also in Germany, many who didn't follow the church guidelines properly have been fired and have lost their job. What it means is that in Germany it can be difficult for even Jugrati to get a job in these places if he's not a baptized Catholic. Now count how many zeros are here. In Germany, the two churches, Catholic and Protestant, own a mind-boggling at least 830,000 hectares of land. Yes, listen carefully, Germany's two churches total assets about 300 billion euros, combined annual turnover 150 billion euros. Yes, Germany's main churches are huge commercial enterprises. As explained here, the two churches are said to be the biggest landlords in Germany. They own forests and farmland. The churches hold stakes in businesses such as publishing houses, breweries, banks and insurance companies. Seriously, in Germany churches hold stakes in breweries? What can I say here? <laughs> But how about this? Government-funded churches hold ownership stakes in publishing houses, in insurance companies, even in banks. Germany, all this seems like the murder of secularism and democracy on so many levels. Don't forget, there are at least 45,000 Catholic and Protestant churches in Germany. And in addition to that, the two churches hold or control a mind-boggling 116,000 buildings in Germany. Also, these churches lease an undisclosed number of properties to homeowners and businesses all over Germany. So, viewers, are you beginning to understand how churches control Germany? Abjara kare ho jao, or tali ba jao, bas rup jao. Asli picture to abi baki he dost. See this? What is happening here? Members of parliament in Germany helping set churches' agendas. Now, let's take a look at Germany's fourth pillar of democracy, its media. So, when it comes to media in Germany, the two churches are very much involved in the key affairs of multiple public broadcasting councils. Read this. Did Druvrati ever tell you that? And has Druvrati shown you this side of Germany's international broadcaster, DW? Probably not. So pause the video and pay close attention. This is Deutsche Welle's organizational chart in 2024. At the top, of course, is the Director General of DW. Quite obviously, a very powerful position, right? But do you know who can select, advise, instruct or even dismiss the Director General of DW? To understand that, come over here. Read this name. What's his name? Carl Houston. What's his role in DW? Well, he's the chairman of the Broadcasting Council of Deutsche Welle. Want to know more about this man? As described here, he is also the head of the Catholic office in Berlin. So, in other words, he's a powerful churchman. So, a powerful churchman is the chairman of the council that can advise and instruct DW's director general and has the duty of election and dismissal of DW's director general. Deutsche Welle, I want to ask you this. Do you feel any shame or guilt when you claim that you are independent? Imagine how Druvrati, Western media sharks or India's enemies would react if Hindu temples started controlling or influencing India the same way the churches do in Germany. At best, Germany seems to be a hybrid theocratic state deceitfully posing as a liberal democracy. And mind you, in Germany, many have left the church not because they became less religious. A lot of them just wanted to save themselves from the huge mandatory church tax. <laughs> clever, very clever. We should not ignore the fact that in Europe, many so-called non-practicing Christians still raise their children as Christians. 
The control or influence of the church can also be seen in my country and in various other parts of Europe. For more on this, consider watching these two episodes that I posted earlier. Next point – Attempts to lynch Indians In Germany, eight Indian visitors were chased by a lynching-hungry mob of 50 people. The German mob chanted neo-Nazi or racist slogans and threw bottles at the eight Indians. Outnumbering those Indians, the German mob began hitting and kicking them. A crowd of onlookers watched. It clearly appeared that those German men were keen to hit those innocent Indians. Scared Indians, fearing for their lives, ran and tried to hide in a pizzeria. The Germans followed and surrounded the pizzeria. The Indians were locked inside and those German men, they tried to kick down the restaurant's doors. Can you imagine the terror those Indians faced? But this was just a tiny reflection of the xenophobic culture that is very much alive in Germany and it is something that many are trying to hide from you. I want to ask you this. Why didn't that news go viral around the world? In Germany, the immediate response by police and local politicians was to play down the attack. But of course, even after those attempts to lynch Hindus or Indians and many other similar stories, the Western media continued to present Germany as a liberal democracy. But the harsh reality is that the Nazi mentality never died in the country that is the mother of Nazism. The mentality continues to manifest itself in different ways. For example, NPD, a right-wing party in Germany, described as a neo-Nazi organization. neo-Nazi organization mein democratic lagane se democracy nahi aati hai. Samjhe kya? By the way, read this description. Don't German nationalism and the Nazi mentality go hand in hand here? By the way, as reported here in Germany, even Hitler's deputy, a Nazi, was proposed for a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> how shameless! And how can we ignore the ongoing rise of AFD in Germany? Don't we know what this political party's ideology is? It is also important to note that many in the West get triggered when democratic India wants to preserve its native Dharmic or Hindu roots. But on the other hand, mainstream political parties in Germany openly and proudly follow the political ideology of Christian democracy. Take a look at this name. Christian Democratic Union of Germany. A major player in Germany's politics. Angela Merkel came from that party. Not only that, even the president of the European Commission came from that party. Can anyone ignore that? So, people may ask, if Germany can openly enjoy and practice its Christian democracy and can still be called liberal and secular, why can't Hindus in India build something like Hindu democracy? So, Druvrati, I have a question for you. In Germany, AFD is rising. The churches are, of course, extremely powerful. If things continue to go wrong, will the history repeat itself in Germany? Can Germany become a Christian dictatorship with a neo-Nazi twist? Well, I hope by now you have the answer. It is not just Hindus. Muslims and members of other minority groups also face institutionalized discrimination or racism in Germany. As reported here, almost every week damage to property or graffiti at a mosque is reported somewhere in Germany. There are clear advantages to Christianity in multiple domains. Even members of minority Christian communities face discrimination. Many don't even consider Jehovah's Witnesses as real Christians. Viewers, after you finish watching this, I recommend that you watch these two videos about Germany too. Next point. Dear Germany sympathizers, before you dare speak a word against India, ask Germans if they are ashamed of how German Federal Republic criticized India for liberating its Goan people from Portuguese colonial rule. Mind you, at that time Portugal was ruled by the fascist dictator Antonio de Oliveira Salazar and India was a democracy. Ask Germany if it is ashamed of the fact that it has sheltered Khalistanis or other anti-India elements who dream of breaking a democratic country into pieces. Now, question 2. Does Druvrati act like a dictator? Does he have a dictatorial mentality? To start with, let's try to understand what the word dictator actually means. As described here, it could be a ruler or it could even be a person who behaves in a tyrannical manner. So, first point. It is well understood that at times a dictator can be treated or referred to as a god. Has Druvrati been referred to as a god? Yes, he has. Perhaps for Druvrati's radicalized followers, truth does not become truth unless Druvrati says it's truth. 
Next point, a dictator usually has big media outlets around them that rather than examining the dictator's conduct critically or showing objectivity, blindly cheer for them and promote them. Has Druvrati received something similar from the big media outlets? Yes, he has. For example, see this. Such media outlets have totally failed when it comes to critically examining Druvrati's track record and the fake content that he has published. And see the kind of coverage the BBC gave him back in 2018. YouTube से कितना कमाते हैं ध्रुवराठी अरे भाई ये भी कोई गंभीर मुद्दा है जो BBC जैसे मीडिया आउटलेट को उठाना चाहिए How much does he earn? I mean, is this such a serious issue that a media outlet like the BBC should be prioritizing or covering it? और इसको देखो ध्रुवराठी कैसे बने दी ध्रुवराठी Published when? 2018. Yes, back in 2018. Yeah, cheerleading hai ya objectivity hai. Where is the critical examination here, BBC? And let's not forget that the BBC is the same broadcaster that has a track record of collaborating with the IRG, which was created to spread fake news and lies globally. The same BBC whose close relationship with the secret British state has already been highlighted. More on this here. A must watch. Next point, Druvrati criticizes the system which acts like a washing machine that can magically wash corrupt people's wrongdoings, accept them or make them look like a hero. But Druvrati is a beneficiary of many so-called washing machines too. For example, the BBC's so-called washing machine seems to have the power to convert social media trolls, popularity-hungry YouTubers or fake content spreaders into social media icons. A man who has published fake or misleading content himself was presented as the champion of fact-checking by the BBC. And the BBC was not the only one that gave Druvrati the so-called washing machine treatment. More on this in a future episode. Druvrati, kya BBC ki washing machine se nikal kar aaye the yaap? Kya dool jate hai vaha aapke fake content ke pap? Whether it is politics or social media, we do not need such washing machines in our system. Next point. A dictator attempts to censor or silence not only those who criticize the dictator, but also those who ask questions. Has Druvrati done something similar? Yes, he has. It is not just about what Druvrati tried to do to me. It is also about censoring or removing many well-written comments from his own fans and followers who questioned him about his fake content after I exposed it. We have kept a record of that. Next point. A dictator, almost always, encourages or ignores violence committed by their followers. Has Druvrati's YouTube channel done something similar? Yes, according to what was shared with us, it has. Take a look. Next point. Dictators use the power of fake news or fake content through social media or other platforms. Has Druvrati done that? Yes, he has. He has published fake content. Next point. Dictators refuse to be held accountable for their mistakes or crimes. Has Druvrati ever shown accountability for this fake content? Well, you have the answer. Next point. Dictators are often hypocrites. <laughs> Big hypocrites. At times, they are the source of the same problems that they claim to be fighting against. Dictators also have a sense of superiority complex. They can use terms like low-level people to describe others. Has Druvrati used these derogatory and divisive words against people? Yes, he has. Druvrati is also the source of the same problems that he claims to be fighting against. Next point. Many dictators act as if they are very brave and intelligent, but deep down, their reality is often quite the opposite. They are too cowardly to face their fears. They get too scared to face the truth. Dictators tend to run away from tough questions. Has Druvrati run away from questions about our fact-checking? Yes, he has. Is interview me mere channel ka naam aata hi ye pani pigya? So, is Druvrati a coward? Well, many strongly feel that he is. Next point. Are dictators manipulative? Yes, they are. Do dictators exploit the loopholes or manipulate the system to achieve their goals? Yes, they do. Has the Druvrati squad circumvented the complex social media algorithms to exploit the loopholes to silence those they didn't like? Well, you have the answer. That is why in this video I have an appeal to you. My video will never take off or go viral if you don't pay attention to this. 
If others are ready to deceitfully mass report our content just because we uncover their wrongdoings, at least you can make sure that you press the like button if you appreciate our work. Remember, there will be people who will do anything to reduce the reach of our content that exposes them. But together, we can try to resist them and the algorithm bias. So very seriously, let's do an experiment. For this video, the target is 300,000 likes, 100,000 comments and at least 20,000 shares on Facebook, X or WhatsApp. If the video reaches this target and still it doesn't go viral, then at least we will know what the YouTube algorithm is like. I want to see this on X. Hashtag Druvrati Dictator Hekia? I am a mother of two Indian citizens and like many others, I have a right to talk about India's domestic politics. Despite that, I try my best to avoid talking about it. I do not promote any political party in India, but on the global stage, I stand for India. It's not easy to go against the tide. I have chosen to do so and have stood firmly against the wrongdoings of some of the most powerful people and countries in the world. Please make sure that you watch these episodes to understand what it means to fearlessly stand by the truth and what it means to stand for Bharat. With all his dictatorial tendencies and dictatorial mentality, imagine what Druvrati is capable of if he is given more power. Druv, you are wondering how those corrupt politicians face their family members after all their wrongdoings, right? Now I want to ask you, after fooling your viewers who trust you by serving them fake content that is still fully playable on YouTube, how can you still sleep peacefully? Perhaps just like how those corrupt politicians do, <laughs> right? Besharmi ki bi hat hoti hai. The irony is that India, a former colony and a victim of Christian colonial criminal states, is now being victim shamed. And unfortunately, as India is being victim shamed by the Western colonial criminal states, some so called brown sahibs who are living in a country that is the mother of Nazism are supporting the narrative of criminals and not the survivor. No, India is not becoming like North Korea, but if things continue to get worse, will Druvrati be in a similar situation to Zakir Naik or Pandu or somebody else? Well, only time will tell. Question 3. Is India becoming a dictatorship? Well, politicians or politically motivated individuals using terms such as Nazi, Hitler, autocrat and dictator against one another is not just limited to India. It has been going on in Western democracies before Druvrati was even born. But on the global stage, the character assassination of Indian leaders and the vilification of India is frequently done in a way that is perhaps only reserved for some. For example, before India's independence in the West, Mahatma Gandhi was referred to as a dictator. He was even compared to Hitler and his party was called fascist. Yes, this may shock you, but back then, in many ways, Mr. Gandhi was portrayed in the same way Mr. Modi is portrayed today. So why back then was there so much propaganda against Mr. Gandhi and why today is there similar propaganda against Mr. Modi? The answer to that question can be found in this video that I published earlier. That is why, whether it is praise from them or a criticism, Western colonial criminal states or their institutions cannot always be taken seriously. For them, it is not about serving humanity, it's about serving their own agenda or proving Western superiority. A good example of this could be this Twisted Democracy Index that is published by Sweden-based VDEM. As expected, India's performance on this index is very bad. But why is that? Is it about the methodology they used? In this video, I explained how twisted methodologies are often designed by selectively choosing parameters that suit multiple Western countries while ignoring parameters that uncover Western countries' crimes and wrongdoings. Also, watch this video to understand the hollow methodology of the World Happiness Report. By the way, let's see who is funding VDEM, which is behind this democracy index. Here is the official website. Read carefully. Under this category, over here, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Sweden, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Denmark, Open Society Foundations, founded by <laughs> George Soros, and over here, funders of their other activities. Aha, even USAID is sitting here. The same USAID that has a track record of funding those who are working on the total evangelization of the world. 
and of course, open society foundations from the same George Soros whose world vision is about imposing a Western-style regime change and subsequent rule by puppet governments. I explain that in this video. Seems India has had enough. There are speculations or reports that indicate that India is planning its own democracy index. This article in Al Jazeera mentions that other countries would not give credibility to an India-developed democracy index if the index is perceived as being driven by the Indian government. If that's the case, then why should countries care about this democracy index from VDEM, especially when the ministries of foreign affairs of Sweden and Denmark are also among the funders? By the way, both Sweden and Denmark perform very well on this index. Does that surprise you at all? But of course, very cleverly, VDEM seems to claim that it is not influenced by its funders. <laughs> VDEM, do you think we believe you? <laughs> Let us never forget that the Western colonial criminal states have a track record of using science to prove their superiority. Remember how European scientists stole the African skulls to conduct racist scientific experiments to prove the racial superiority of white Europeans? Times have changed, but their desire to prove Western superiority has not changed. Science or scientific research are still used to prove Western superiority. Yes, today, multiple Western countries misuse science or use various global indexes based on twisted methodologies to deceitfully prove that they are happier, more democratic, less corrupt, more inclusive and more environment-friendly. <laughs> but the reality is very different. Viewers, if you are interested in learning more about the real side of Sweden, watch this. And this. In the West, when the church-owned media runs the show, when chemicals are sprayed on peaceful protesters, when peaceful protesters are blinded, when horses are used against them, when laws are made to charge protesters fines of up to 30,050 euros, how can those Western democracies still claim to be liberal? The Western colonial criminal states claim that they are concerned about whether India's domestic agencies and institutions are functioning independently or not. But when the same Western colonial criminal states not only misuse their country's domestic institutions, but also misuse global institutions and organizations to fulfill their selfish or neo-colonial agenda, does it sound dictatorial or not? Does it affect their democracy-related rankings or not? Criminal states that have committed some of the worst atrocities against the global population have escaped punishment and have almost self-appointed themselves to commanding positions in some of the most powerful institutions in the world. Does that sound dictatorial or not? When the Western criminal democracies support or partner with dictatorships or terrorists around the world and commit or contribute to crimes against humanity, does that behavior sound dictatorship-friendly or not? Does it affect their democracy-related rankings or not? When the churches, neo-Nazis or even an authoritarian regime like Azerbaijan find a way to the German parliament, does it murder our Western democratic values or not? So what is going on here? Are the so-called liberal Western democracies for sale? Is the European parliament for sale? <laughs> well, I think the best answer to this question can be given by Qatar. <laughs> See these images <laughs> and the missing paper ballots in the Western countries. Well, that's not even a surprise. Next point. In a big and diverse country like India, the majority-minority equation and demographics are different in different regions. There are parts in India where Christians are the majority, parts where Hindus are in majority and parts where Muslims are the majority. Hence, within India, the power dynamics between various religious groups can differ. That's why, within India, there are parts where Hindus have faced displacement or oppression. On the national stage, not all minorities complain about the so-called Hindu majoritarianism, but those minorities whose religious ideologies seek global conquest are often seen complaining about Hindus' resistance. When Kashmiri Hindus were massacred by Muslims in India, does it reflect Hindu majoritarianism? When words like eradication of Sanatan Dharma are used openly in a country where Hindus are the majority, does this reflect Hindu majoritarianism? When Hindus in Tripura face Christian militancy, does it reflect Hindu majoritarianism? Does Hindus Vasudev Kutumbakam sound dictatorial to you? Does Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu sound dictatorial to you? 
India's Prime Minister says that he believes in Vasudev Kutumbeka. Druvrati, do you think these German neo Nazis also appreciate the beautiful message in Vasudev Kutumbeka? Druvrati, you cannot fool all your viewers with your fake content or propaganda. We know that democracy is not a perfect system of government. Regardless of the political party that is in power, the imperfections of the democratic system will remain. A lot of those imperfections are not unique to a single political party or to a single democracy. Many democracies suffer from similar imperfections. No, India is not becoming a dictatorship. The harsh truth is that India is a victim of dictatorships that were supported by the Western criminal democracies, whether it was Pakistan in 1971 or Portugal during the liberation of India's Goa. Around the world, the West, individuals supported by the Western institutions and their proxies have a long track record of installing puppet governments and collaborating with terrorists, dictators or traitors in the affected countries to fulfill their geopolitical agendas or neo-colonial desires. Perhaps this is how Western superiority and hegemony is maintained. And by the way, let us not forget that even NATO's founding member, Portugal, was a dictatorship too. The collective West seems to be the actual enemy of what democracy means in true sense. The Western colonial criminal states will never stop fighting flaws in India as long as India refuses to become their puppet. First, they claimed that their Christian god is superior. Then they started using science to claim that the so-called white race is superior. Now, they claim that the Western-style democracy is superior. Yes, India has imperfections in its democracy and it should continue working to become even better. But India cannot become better by listening to a politically motivated propagandist who himself seems to have a dictatorial mentality. It is unfortunate that there are some people who, in their desperate attempts to bring their favorite political party to power in India, may end up creating confusion and hatred against Indians and Hindus globally something that could create conditions leading to the lynching of Indians who believe in Vasudev Kutumbekan and can potentially motivate Western neo-Nazis who practice Hitler's ideology to harm Hindus or Indians. Never forget that attempts to lynch or hunt Hindus or people of Indian descent were not only made in Germany but also in the USA. For its imperfections and problems, India needs carefully crafted solutions that are derived from independent academic inquiries that diagnose the problems accurately without overestimating or underestimating them. Good-hearted criticism for India? Yes, it is welcome, always welcome. Deceitful propaganda hoping to influence India's election outcome? Well, no, there is no place for that. For academics who are India's genuine well-wishers, an election time propaganda video like this is no better than trash, especially when it comes from a politically motivated propagandist who has a track record of spreading fake content. Perhaps real Indian patriots will never forgive the traitors who, for their selfish, politically motivated goals, are maligning the image of a country that is the mother of yoga, the mother of democracy, and whose people went to Europe to save Europeans from their own Nazism and fascism. Druvrati, AFD is rising in Germany. Neo-Nazis are preparing for day X. Their goals are quite clear. Don't forget that Germany has a track record of genociding non-Christians and mass murdering many who are non-white. But don't you worry, if things go wrong, Mother India will try to rescue you and all her people living in Germany from those German neo-Nazis, even though some of those Indians have defamed her. And yes, Mr. Modi and Mr. Jashankar could be in the forefront of that rescue mission. See you again!